Hello, Johnny here again with another video. Um, in the previous video we discussed labels and variables in assembly language and um, we looked at how you could use them. In this video we are going to be looking at assembly macros. Now an assembly macro is a piece of code that you can insert into the assembly code many times um, and use parameters to pass into that macro to allow you to change the way that works. So the way I'm doing it at the moment is here's an example of assembly code and basically this just reverses the screen. So we start off with nothing we load the uh, screen pointer, which is defined as 0400. We add X to it, and on the first one it's zero. Exclusive OI root 128, and then store it back onto the screen in exactly the same place. And we re repeat this process for up three other times, for bank one, bank two, and bank three. And we loop round for 200, uh, 255 loops and that effectively reverses the screen. So if we run it there you go. So it's turned the background to be solid. So if we run it again it will reverse it again. Nice and quick, nice and easy. Now the beauty of a macro is that you can define a set of uh, code and use that same code many times and affect it by using parameters and the, the beauty of using macros is you can write the macro once but use the macro many times and we can do that in this simple example because we are doing exactly the same code there Oops. There, there, and there. And all we're doing is using a different parameter. So we can create one macro to do the three lines and then call that macro three, four times. So the way to define a macro is you start with DFM, so define macro. We'll call this reverse. screen location and we'll put in LDA LDX no LDA because we want to load parameter 1 comma X and we'll copy the code that we've got there and we're going to store it in parameter 1 comma X and then to finish it it's called end macro and it's basically as simple as that. So the slash one is what we call the parameter. So if we had more than one parameter, we could say slash two. So if we called this, we'd have two parameters, like say 1024 and 2048. That is parameter one and that is parameter two. But in this particular example, we've only got the one parameter, which would be that. And we're going to uh, Whoops. we're only going to use the first parameter so let's put that back to one and the way to use it is we're going to we're going to insert it for the moment and it's basically just type it in reverse there we go and the editor's picked it up and we give it the parameter To do it again for the second bank do it again for the third
four. And then all we have to do is copy exactly what we saw. This is going to be the first bank, so the second bank's going to be plus oh no oh, oh, and again plus oh two oh whoops oh two oh, oh plus three oh, oh. So now we've converted all this lot. into that. So when we assemble this it's going to insert these three lines into this line using this parameter in these sections here. So we'll just save that and if we run it we should have exactly the same as before. So we'll look at the assembly code to see that it's done it right So if we scroll down we see the the macro there and then we see the three the four areas where that macro is defined yeah and as you can see it's pulled the parameters through so when it runs there you go, exactly the same result but with more efficient assembly code. So we could add another parameter. So we could say this is a parameter here. So let's bring that two. So one two eight. And then this one we could say or it with one two nine six or it was sixty four Alright, we're 160. We're going to get a very different result here. But it'd be interesting to see what happens. There you go. Very different result. But that was just adding another parameter. But it get, that's what macros gives you the flexibility to do. So we'll just put this back to 128 and get rid of the. to two sorted so that was macros in a nutshell um, I hope this helps and we're going to use macros a lot when we're doing assembly so um, I will move on to the next topic in tutorial 3. Until then, see you later. Bye.